oh my God, I, I, no, I shall not ship something as that. Good morning, friends, and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be slightly a little bit of a vlog, a little bit of Christmas home decor, a little bit of shipping. So we're going to make this just, just a big all-encompassed video, you know, just doing a little bit something different. That's okay, right? We can do, we don't, it doesn't always have to be going and shopping with me. Every once in a while we can veer to do something a little bit different. I know that some people have asked me to do a shipping ship with me video. So I'm going to do a little bit of that today as well. So that's going to be kind of all encompassed. I'm, I've, I've got my makeup on. I'm ready. I'm dressed. I am going to get my hair color today because, well, that needs to happen. But, um, I just wanted to go ahead and turn around and show you one of my very favorite things. So let's do that now. I get a lot of uh, people asking me about my nails and I don't like to go to the salon. I don't, I don't, have time. I don't want to sit there. So this is what I have am obsessed with. Color Street. These are Halloween. I didn't, I forgot that. This is, this is what happens when you have a collection. You forget some of the ones that you have. Now this is not a sponsored video. I just, I like Color Street. So I will link my um, Color Street rep down in the description below. She didn't ask me to. She doesn't even know that I'm doing this. She's probably going to hate me for doing it, but I, I'm I'm obsessed. They they are 100% real nail polish strips. Um, my set usually lasts me about two weeks. I do put a top coat on them just to make it last a little bit longer. But I've got all these. I got some Christmas designs. Um, they're just look at those. So if you have not ever used Color Street, I highly recommend them. Like I said, I will link my reps. Um, all of her information down in the description. Oh my gosh, there's Santa. I need to pull those aside to make sure that I pull those out. You can even do like French manicures and they even have them for your toes, which I still go to get a pedicure because I, it, it would not look very good, but they're very easy to do. And the way that these work is you can cut these in half and then you get two uses out of one um, packet. So I love, I'm obsessed with the color street. All right, I'm standing in front of the one and the only Christmas tree that I put up this year. I didn't get out my tree, my green tree with, and all my Hallmark ornaments. I just didn't feel like doing it this year. So this is the only tree that I have set up this year. And that is my aluminum Christmas tree. And I absolutely love it. I just have it simply decorated with just some um, old vintage shiny bright ornaments. I did get purchased one of these Merry Christmas Bedford um, Christmas ornaments from a local shop. And then we do have Maybell's first Christmas ornament. And there she is. Say hi, Maybell. Don't just ignore everything else that's on the floor, but say hello to everybody. It's been a long time. Yes, yeah, so are you gonna say hello? Say, I am a very good girl, but I don't sit still very often and I have a lot of energy. Say hello. Say hi, everybody. Mabel is a Jack Russell Terrier, and she is the joy of our lives. We love her to pieces. Tree, I, this tree, I do have to put it up on a stand because it isn't very tall. This was, um, I bought this from a friend of mine who, this was her grandmother's tree. So it's kind of a special tree because um, it was just a one owner tree. I would like to get a, a bigger one. Um, and I'm still obviously gonna still use this one and display it, but I'd like to get one that I don't have to put on you know, on a table. Don't have any presents wrapped yet. So that's, that's what it is to that. I always put books underneath my tree until the presents arrive. When the kids were little, we would read books underneath the Christmas tree. And so these are a couple of favorites that we have set out. And actually this one here is one that my mom always had underneath our tree as a child and I have a color wheel for this tree that works just fine but it's noisy so I prefer these um, projection lights that you get from Walmart and just put it right underneath the tree and I will insert a video of the tree at night but it does project 
even if on the ceiling, so it does give a nice glow. The next little section is right underneath our TV here, but it is my, um, what are those called? Yeah, my ceramic trees. I have four that I've kept. I have a white one too that I'm gonna be bringing home as well. I'm not probably, I don't know if I'm gonna put it with this one or not, but with this section or not. I just have a few little things. These are the little service bells that I like. I've got a couple more. These are just the two that I've kept out in these old vintage ornaments there. The Santa Claus Land Santa, which was sent by a subscriber. So thank you so much. I've used it in my display. And then this is a picture of Emma, her first Christmas back in 1999. And that's this little display here. Oh, and my big blow mold Santa Claus, because he stays inside. And then over here, I have this bench. Um, I don't have our stockings hung yet. But this is the stockings. They're all just kind of piled right here. But I have my grumpy Santa that I absolutely love. My pouty bear that I just got from Michael. I did put a little Santa hat on him. The little snowman that I just recently got. That's the phone to the North Pole. So this little guy is something, it's a merry little Mary Inglebright. I love Christmas. Something that my mom had given to me and I've always just kind of, she's always hung it up and so I, I've hung it up as well. I kind of put it in different spots every year. I do have a couple pieces of the kids' artwork from when they were children that I do hang up. That one was Emma's. And then this little guy, he's missing his pipe, but Mark made him for me many, many years ago. Um, 1996, the back of it. I'll hang around as long as you want. Love you always, Mark. So he made me that before we were married. I typically always hang it there. And then my mother-in-law actually painted this piece a long time ago um, that was always hung in their house. And so now it's, well, I always hang it in mine. I love it. And then the top here, I have a few more blow molds on top of this cabinet here. And Liz Retro sent me the garland with the creepy Santa baby heads with no eyeballs. So th that's charming. I love that. So that hangs there. And then um, a friend of mine painted this, Nancy. We used to sell her signs in the shop. So I always hang that. See, there it is, Nancy. I always hang it here. And then Santa's key, since we don't have a fireplace, we always would hang Santa's key either from the front door um, at Christmas Eve, and so I always just kind of hang it near the front door, and I still do. So this is the key that Santa uses to get into our home. On this side of the room, I have a wreath that my best friend Cindy made me. It does light up I where I hang it. I don't have a plug-in for it, so I just like it hung there on that window pane. And then over here is just another little shelf full of some more Christmas items. Here is my collection of these little like composite angel. I started this collection last year um, and I've got, I'm kind of picky the ones that I get now. I like the ones with these bright colors. You can see I've got some on that shelf. I like to fill things with like a bunch of one things on a shelf and so that's kind of what I've done here. Liz Retros has sent me these two little cute angels there too. And I've got the three wise men that are made in that same material but that's my little composite angel shelf. This is a new thing that I've done this year and I have gathered up and I have a few more because I have a couple more of these receipt spikes that I need to fill. But these vintage Christmas tree ornaments do fit really nice on a vintage tree spike. So I've got, I actually have this atomic one that's on this little miniature tree with the mercury beads. I have a small collection of ornament hangers and then some cards that were sent by some viewers, a little cupie Christmas card there. These are paper mache Santa tree toppers, these two guys right here. They sit up fine on their own. Um, and then this is a plastic one. He's a tree topper as well, but he just kind of is tucked back there. Um, and then here's another little Christmas tree angel. She's also on a old receipt spike. Um, I did get a little Santa hat for my little cupie guy. 
Um, and then, you know, flower frogs are great to use for Christmas cards. Um, this is just a textile tape tin that somebody put this old decal on. So, I just kind of set it there. Liz Retros also sent me a little putt's house that I have sitting here. This is an old um, flocked Christmas display. He is up on a stand, but I have him kind of tucked into this little casserole dish that I have the books. And I usually change the books out each season to match the colors to match each season there. But I have him there. And then um, a candelabra with the vintage candles. These are little Holt Howard candle huggers and then the Lucite candle. And I did, I kept my swung vases. I kept the greens and the reds out. And the other ones I, I did put away until Christmas is over. But I also love to find these old pictures of Christmas trees from the 50s. And I like to tuck those in with my displays as well. I also have my collection of Santa mugs um, that I have displayed on the uh, bottle brush or the the mug rack and I'm I'm thinking about leaving these out all year I really am I love looking at them and um, I think I might do that I think I'm gonna keep them out now this is a sign that I got I think I got it at Walmart last year it's supposed to be for your yard but I liked it just to hang inside and then my friend Cindy gave me that sign there Mark and I drink our coffee Christmas morning out of the Ray Dunn mugs, but that is my Santa mug tree. Here I just have a stack of crates that I just kind of stacked up. And then inside are, are a bunch of jolly fellows inside, flocked by Mr. Hanky Christmas Pooh, because you know, he's, he's kind of the star of the show at least in this house sometimes. But I like the grumpier they are, the better. This one is um, a Harold Gale style. I do not believe that he is an actual Harold Gale because the face is much different. But then it's just got a couple little Santas in there and little Cupid claws down there. But I just, and oh, I have the, a vintage um, tinsel wreath hanging from, hanging from the, um, the crate here with just a little bit of wire, but I do like the way that it turned out this year. And in this corner, I have my bar cart with a uh, tree that I actually purchased from Liz Retros on her eBay store, but I put the shiny bright ornaments on it and some um, red mercury beads that I purchased from Michael, the Cult of Vintage. And then I don't know if, if you remember, I bought this green trunk at the antique mall and I've had a lot of people that want to buy it, but I wanted to keep it because I wanted to use it for my Christmas display and it turned out pretty good. This was Mark's old truck when he was a child and I just put a knee hugger Santa and a little gold flocked Santa there. Another um, flower frog with a vintage Christmas card and then I had a viewer that sent me this little mini Santa and I loved it so much in the box and I'm just going to go ahead and keep it in the box and I have it tucked right there and I've got a Holt Howard mug or a picture that was sent to me. Thank you so much. And a little knee hugger elf. And then down here, I just have some more, just some more Christmas little doohickeys down there. And then my swung bases there flanked on the sides. This is a shelf that's ever changing for the holidays. I do switch it out right now. Obviously it's Christmas, but I just have it just just with a bunch of funsies on it. This is actually a table that I purchased from Barb. Don't mind all of the cords. I just did a live Monday night. So there are cords and tripods and stuff everywhere it seems. But um, I did buy this table from Barb at Jeffrey's pop-up shop. And I just was able to put some of my little bits and bobs. Oh look, there's a black light flashlight that I used last night on it and I like just the just I like for someone to come over here and it, they can just like stand in front of the shelf and look at it for for a long time and I, I do like that I like to do displays like that and then over on the side here is the sheet music the Christmas sheet music these frames do switch out every season two I have sheet music that I that I switch it all out and down here in my little mini shopping cart, I have my collection of Rodney Rondas. They were these little made by Hallmark. I think we have Ramona, 
Yeah, we have Ramona, Rodney, and Randy. I only have one Randy. Randy's harder to find. But I have one big Randy and then Rhonda's and Ramona's. Yeah, a couple Ramona's, but I love them. And in this big cabinet here, I have more Santas. So I'll open it up and we'll do a little bit of a show and tell. Of the Santas. side is one of my favorite layer. I love my potato chip tins and I have a little aluminum tree in them and then my little display here. This is a new guy. I actually got him at a thrift store um, for like 99 cents. I'm not sure ma who made him but he is not old but I really like the way that he looked. And then the little pink tree and the pink deer from Target which are new things. Yes I know but they're still really cool. And I've got a little spaghetti Santa there and another card. Liz Retro's made the snowman with the gnarly teeth. This little guy right here was sent to me by my buddy Evan. So thank you so much, Evan, for sending me this very cool Santa mug. Yes, I'm full aware that it's ridiculous, but I cannot explain it, nor will I stop. I love them. All right, well, I'm back at the shop now. I just got my hair colored. Yay, yay. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and get started on doing some shipping and I have this new contraption that I bought. So hopefully I'll be able to do a few more of these shipping videos in the future because the way that this tripod adjustable arm thing, that's the technical word for it, um, will allow me to do that. So the first thing, well, I had a sale with Michael, the cult of vintage yesterday and I sold 15 things. So I'm not going to, you know, sh we're not going to ship all 15 things together, but I'm going to show you some of the like breakable things, um, just to give you an idea. I do use pirate ship, um, to ship all of my items and which I highly recommend that you do. Um, shipping does not have to be as intimidating as you may think. Um, the more that you do it, the more you'll get used to it. Um, the, the thing that I can't stress enough is to make sure that you have supplies so you can see behind me i do recycle boxes so any amazon orders i get or 
eBay orders that I order, I do recycle the boxes as well as the cardboard because sometimes things will warrant me to put them in between, like kind of sandwich them in between pieces of cardboard to protect them. But I also keep a stash of shipping boxes available. Um, I do buy most all of my boxes on Amazon. I do have all of the shipping supplies that I use. It is linked down in the description below. The scales, the, the tape dispensers, all of those things are linked down in the description. Also, the bubble wrap that I use, American Bubble Boy, which is, I cannot, I just, I've said this before, but I cannot scream their praises enough. Um, they, they, it's, it's guaranteed two day shipping. It's an American company. Um, it's a small business. So you are supporting, still supporting a small business and being able to provide for your own small business. So I love American bubble boy. I do have a link, an affiliate link that is down in the description as well. So if you're interested in getting great bubble, bubble wrap, I highly recommend them. So, all right, with that being said, let's go ahead and I will adjust my camera here so you'll just see my hands working on this fairy lamp here. Um, and we'll get shipping. Let's get shipping. Okay, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say this might be a little rough at first because this is the first time that I'm using this here angle. So we've got our beautiful Viking Diamond Poi fairy lamp. What I like to do is go ahead and have my bubble wrap all kind of laid out on the table. Um, I'm going to fill the void. And what I mean by that is I'm going to shove some, there you go, now you can see. I'm gonna shove some paper inside of the vessel just to give it a little bit more integrity when it's being shipped. I have a big tub of paper that I do recycle as well. So we're just gonna, like when you go shopping at antique malls and they wrap your stuff in all of your paper, save all of that because you'll be able to use it. Just get a big storage bin and keep it all in there. You can put a lid on it. You can shove it out in the garage. If you're working from home, it, you make it work. So then we start at the very, or I start, let me get this up here. See, I might have to make some adjustments from time to time, but I start at the very end. Give myself a little bit of space between the item and the end of the bubble wrap. And then we just tuck and roll. We tuck it and we roll it and we tuck it and we roll it. We want to make sure that we're having, that we're putting a nice good layer that's going to protect this breakable item. If you think that you're using too much, you might be, but it might just save it from getting smashed because you know, well, you know, things can get broken in transit at times. And then I just tape the ends. I like to fold the ends over. Um, to, I don't like cut the extra off on, on a lot of pieces because I think that it does provide it a little bit more cushioning there on the sides. So there we have the top one. All right, so then, you know, the bottom of the fairy lamp, we still have a little void in there. So we are going to put a little bit more paper. And I, you know what, I am using newspaper. I'm recycling the newspaper. It's not gonna mess up this piece of glass. I wouldn't put newspaper on everything, but I am gonna use it today on this. And then again, I'm gonna keep it sitting up with a little bit, you see that? A little bit at the end. I cover the top of it and still tuck and roll. This is where the tuck and roll technique, if you will, it, that's when it's important to be able to lay your bubble wrap out on a surface so you can easily do that. I did it for years. I did it for years on my dining room table. So you can make it work no matter where you're at. And so then, you know, that was sitting up. You can see the end of it in there. And then we're just gonna tuck the sides up and over and tape each side. Again, it's going to provide some cushioning there on the side. And then we've got nice two bundles right here. <laughs> I hate to move the camera angle because I'm afraid I'm not gonna be able to get it right back again. Now, here's the thing. I do zhuzh up my packages a little bit. It isn't something that you have to do. The one thing that I would definitely recommend that you do is put some sort of identification in there. Your business card, you can handwrite something. 
you know, I get my business cards from Got to Print and I get like 2,000 of them. See, I get a lot of them and it's under $30. So if I remember, I will put the link in. If not, you might have to, you know, write a, me a message or s link it in the comment or leave me a message in the comment. But it's the most important thing is your calling card. It lets people know what platforms you sell on, where they can follow you and who you are so they can shop with you again. And honestly, you want them to shop with you again. You do. So which is one of the reasons why, well, there's a couple of reasons why I zhuzh up my packages. One, I like to do it. It makes me feel good. It, it's a calming presence in my life. And I also like the fact that my customers will open up a box and it's almost like they've bought themselves a present. And everybody likes to get a present. Everyone likes to unwrap something. Um, I do try to find things the most economically way that I possibly can. I will use things just like um, a lot of these things I get from Goodwill are like these little Christmas holiday cards. I'll tuck one of those in with my business card. Um, I'll, buy, I'll buy holiday cards in the baggie section at Goodwill. Just little things like, well, these were at Goodwill too. They're napkins that stand up, but they're snowmen and they're cute. So they just zhuzh up your package just a little bit. I also use... I also use tool. So sometimes I'll use the tissue paper and sometimes just wrapping a ribbon around the item will make it look nice in the box. You don't have to use the tissue paper. Um, I buy it in bulk on Amazon. Um, and again, it makes me feel good. I like to do it. I think that it, it, it provides my customers with a service and that's important to me. So it isn't necessary, no, but it's fun. And every I, I just love doing it. That's, let's call, let's just say I'm going to be a little bit selfish because it provides me joy. And sometimes we need to do things that provide us joy. And actually it, 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 then it provides joy to other people. So the key word today is joy. Spread joy. Let's, let's be kind to one another. All right. So let's go ahead and I'm going to put this big box of business cards back and then we'll finish with the shipping. So this is why I can't show you all 15 things because we'll be here all day. But I do have a 10 by eight by six box. And look, look at this Real Nifty vintage tape. You know that you can order tape from realnifty.com and he has Christmas ones right now. I just placed a second order because I love it. I do, I love it. Oh, we're taking a, a drink break now apparently. Okay, so I've got my box all ready and set aside. These will fit nicely in there. I'm going to go ahead and put some paper. It's going to be noisy. I'm going to put some paper at the bottom of this box just to get it ready. You want to make sure that you have a barrier on all sides of your box. So this is going to be the barrier on the bottom and I will put paper along the sides once we get the item in the box. So one thing I'm gonna do is I'll use my, my Christmas tissue paper here, which you can get at various different places. I'm gonna wrap just one of the items in the tissue paper, like so, let me move my camera down. got these both wrapped up and I just happen to look I like the look of the different the different colors there so now I'm going to lay the items in the box and there and there now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some more paper and we're gonna we're gonna put paper around the sides We also, as you can see, I tucked some on the side there and there was enough to where I could lay it over the top. So now it is ready to be sealed. 
before you seal it, give it a little bit of shake. If it makes room or if it makes noise or if you can feel things jostling around in there, put some more paper in there or some sort of barrier and it will, you don't want things jiggling around. You want to make sure that nothing is jingling around. And then I'm going to top it off with some of my festive Real Nifty Vintage tape and it's ready to go on the scale. There is my scale. Make sure that when you're using your scale that it is zeroed out, that you don't have anything left over from a previous package. And this weighs, let me turn it around so you can see, if you can. See, it weighs two pounds, 2.4 ounces. Well, nope, 2.5 ounces. So we are going to always go up. So we're gonna say it weighs two pounds and three ounces. So I'm gonna write that on the box two pounds and three ounces. And I know whose this is. She knows too if she's watching the video. I'm gonna write her name on here. Thank you, Lori. And I already know that this is a 10 by eight by six box, but sometimes I'm anal enough and I'll just go ahead and write it on here. So I'm gonna set this aside then and I'm gonna get another one ready. And then when I get a couple of them um, all shipped up and or packaged up and ready to go i'll sit down and i'll do the invoices but nice solid box it's going to arrive safe and sound okay so the next items i'm going to ship up there are three different things and they're all going to the same person but you know what look they're not breakable <laughs> that's so good that they're not breakable but they could still get damaged so we still want to make sure that we're going to protect them i will use uh the ziploc baggies um, you can get them in bulk on Amazon. I do have them linked, but you can see I also just, it, I'll use just the ones that I can get from Walmart as well. So I've got some ribbon foil icicles. I have those in a baggie. And I have these styrofoam glittery tree and balls. And then a little tree hugger angel. So I have them all in plastic. That does help protect them, but I am going to, I want to go a step beyond to really make sure. And we're just gonna, we're gonna make sure that they get there safe and sound. I do like to um, tape the sides of my bags closed, but see, this is just a little Ziploc bag. I do get them from the Walmart brand ones work just fine as well. All right, so I don't want these balls in here to be bouncing around everywhere on the on the journey to their new home. So I'm going to try to get as much of the air out of the baggie as I can. Then I'm going to fold it down, kind of where they're all kind of flat. And I'm going to tape. I'm going to tape the flap down on the bag. Then I'm going to use some bubble wrap, and I'm going to just use this this bigger bigger bubble bubble wrap. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna wrap a layer around to protect it. I, don't, I think I got too much. We're gonna tear some of that off. Again, you can get this um, bigger bubble bubble wrap on American Bubble Boy as well. We're gonna tape both both sides down. So while it's there's not breakable, something could still lay on top of this and smash it. And so I don't want that to happen. So I'm still gonna provide a little bit of layer of protection in there. Now, these are all breakable things. I am not shipping them in a poly bag. There are very few things that I will ship in a poly bag. I don't want her head to get crushed. That would be horrible. I don't want these to arrive damaged. So we are going to treat them just as if they are a fragile piece of glassware. So this little angel, I'm going to make sure that she's got all her little, I'll show you what she is. But she's a tree topper. I mean, she has these little bits that hang low. So I want to make sure that those are going to stay protected. And probably what I'm going to do to remedy that is I'm going to get some of my tool here. And I would put a rubber band around it, but I don't have a rubber band on hand. So we're going to use what we have. So I'm going to use a little bit of this tool and we're going to wrap that around her to make sure that, oh, you don't get up there. You want to be very careful to make sure that these aren't going to get damaged in shipping. I think just tighten it around there once will be fine. And then we'll put it in the baggie. Again, we're going to make sure that we're getting as much of the air out as we can. 
And then I'm gonna, we're gonna roll her. She's going for a ride. And then I'm gonna use, let's see, is this gonna be big enough? Yeah. I'm gonna use that other roll of big bubble bubble wrap and we're gonna wrap her to protect her as well because she deserves to be protected just like a piece of beautiful glassware. This is fine, just how it is in the paper, because we're putting it in a box, so we won't have to do anything to that. So now we'll play the happy music and we'll zhuzh these up. breakable per se. I am still going to put one piece of paper in there. It's just a nice touch. We're going to put this one, this on the bottom since it is flat. And we're going to put our sequin balls on top and then our angel right there. And it's going to be in the box like that. Then we'll use some more paper to protect the top. The last thing that I'm going to ship with you today is this beautiful Jack in the pulpit vase. And you may look at it and be like, Oh my God, I, I, no, I shall not ship something as that, but it isn't so bad. And I'm going to show you what I do now. Probably the most difficult thing about shipping an art glass vase is just trying to find the right box. So you kind of have to look sometimes in your arsenal of other boxes over there. You know, luckily I think I found one that works. So we're going to see if this one will work today. Um, and this one is a 12 by 12 by four box. So I kind of laid it in there without all the stuff in it. So we're going to double, we're going to cross our fingers and hope for the best that this box is going to work. Um, with these kind of weird shaped things, I like to wrap them in paper first before I put them in bubble wrap. But I do want to... Try to use, I want to try, I want to try to use some kind of crinkled up paper to try to fill in this void a little bit and especially wrap something around this little nub right here. So we're going to do that and then we're going to lay it down on a piece of paper. And then I'm also going to use some of the scrap paper to put, let me turn this this way so you can maybe see it better, around this voided space right there. So I'm just going to crinkle up some paper and put it all the way around that. Get back in there, you. And then we're gonna take this outside paper and we're gonna wrap it around it as well. And it's like we're just giving it a little hug. I'm gonna use a little bit of tape. Now this is just the first layer. So there's gonna be several layers. All right, so this is just layer number one and I think I'm actually gonna put This is more recycled antique mall paper. I'm going to put a little bit more paper around the stem of it as well. So we've almost made it like a little sarcophagus, so to speak. Then I'm going to roll out some bubble wrap, lay it flat on my table, lay our little sarcophagus down flat as well. Again, I like to have a little bit of excess. Oh, you can't even see. A little bit of excess over here to get started on the tuck and roll. I'm just going to tuck and roll it. And tape it at the top. And we're going to tuck over the bubble wrap and tape it on the sides.
okay? Then I'm gonna go one step further. This is why it's nice to have this kind of bigger bubbled bubble wrap on hand for delicate items like this. I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna wrap it in another layer of the big bubble bubble wrap. Bubble Boy, you can get three different size, or three different, you can get the small bubble, the medium bubble, and the large bubble. I myself like the medium and the large. And I am feeling as confident as can be that this is going to arrive safe and sound because I'm taking the extra lengths to, make, to ensure that. So there we go. We have our little bundle there. Now, I'm not going to wrap it in tissue paper because it's a pretty big thing, but we can still make it pretty by putting a little bit of tulle around it. And then let's put in a nice bright Christmas card. And now I, I put in blank Christmas cards because I'm going to let the user give it to somebody else. So we'll put in a business card, and this was a nice size purchase. So let's put in a little, a little ornament, a little Santa Claus ornament. All right, so now I'm gonna, before I put paper in this box, I'm gonna see, we're just gonna see if it's even gonna work. No, it's not gonna work. Here is the fun part of finding a box. That's the only bad thing about shipping glass. It's finding the box. Let's try this. I think it's gonna fit in this 12 by 12 by eight, which you can get for free on USPS. So that's what we're gonna do. It will fit in here. We're gonna put our paper in first. We're gonna get a nice layer of paper in there. We're gonna lay it down. I'm gonna put it probably at a little bit of an angle, which is fine because we're gonna protect it well with paper. Have paper on each side and on all sides. Hear nothing. We want to hear nothing. Now we're going to weigh it. It's very light. Two pounds, two pounds, 13.9 ounces. So two pounds, 14 ounces. Really pretty light. It's a 12 by 12 by 8 box. And now we're ready to get the invoice ready to send this off send the invoice off to the new buyer all right so this video like i said was a little non-traditional it's a little a little bit of this a little bit of that and i'm going to start doing a little bit more videos like this yes i'm still going to be going you know shopping and stuff like that but i'm going to start doing some more video videos that are kind of focused around my own shop i need to shop my own shop for a while because I have a lot of things. So um, make sure that you are following me on both Instagram and here on YouTube. Um, hit the bell notification so you'll be notified every time I do go live. I am going to start going live and having some little pop-up um, speed shop. So where I'm going to just basically walk around, I'm going to hold something up and we're going to sell it right then and there. So make sure that you are subscribed to my YouTube channel, hit the bell notification so that you'll be notified when I decide just to on a whim, as sometimes I do just kind of pop in and start selling some things because, well, you know, we got a lot of things to sell here. So, um, I know it's, if you're new to my channel, you're probably thinking what and what? What is she doing? She has a full store there. Why is she not opening up? I'm going to be explaining that a little bit more in depth too. So again, make sure that you do are subscribed to my channel. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and say goodbye. And as always, don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Bye guys.